Hey, what up, everybody? It's Zeke. Uh, I haven't even started drinking coffee yet. So, I made a big score this week. My, uh, my record connection, Peyton, sold me a bunch of 45s and LPs and CDs. And also picked up some Goodwill stuff this week. Uh, I'll show you. Five bucks, but I had 20% off. This is the in-store promotional thing from the um, Free as a Bird um, that came out, you know, and that was, what, in the past 10 years that came out. And uh, the people had bought, had framed the, they, so they bought this frame and framed it, and I could tell because it's got a, the great frame-up sticker here, um, which is in Richmond, Virginia, a framing store. So 25 bucks off with 25% is not enough to cover this frame this frame alone is worth a hundred dollars probably so this is pretty cool and i think it just looks good i think i like it i would even hang this outside of my room and maybe hang this out in the house because it looks good anyway i love it um i think i could probably sell my wife on that she she's into that she's into the beatles everybody's into the beatles i got some stones books this is Keith Richards' book. Uh, this was in a box of CDs, but this is Keith Richards' book about his grand, how his grandfather bought him his first guitar and taught him to play major chords in Malagana. His guitar is a uh, grandfather's name is uh, Gus, and this is also about his family, about his kids and grandkids. Good morning, Nick. And the connection he has with his kids and his grandkids—it's pretty cool. So uh, Keith Richards' grandfather. You know, taught him to play guitar. He was a little kid. He had a he had a classical guitar. Hey, good morning. What's up, Kurt? So Keith uh, Richards' grandfather had a guitar like hanging up, and he said, "When you're tall enough to play it, you know, you can you can have it." And eventually, he kept wanting it. And his grandfather gave it to him. And he slept with it and loved it. And then he became a big rock star. Moral of the story is when you encourage kids, you never know how far they might go with it. It was pretty cool pretty cool book there's another one here there's a signed Ron Wood book this is Ron Ronnie Wood from the Rolling Stones this book of his art um, his drawings his paintings and then in the inside it's signed by Ronnie Wood so that was pretty cool that was in the collection that I bought from Peyton there were a couple things I bought just uh, of my own stuff um, this collection from Peyton had like a lot of 90s stuff, the Swans, Children of God. A lot of this I will probably sell, uh, but I don't know what I'm going to hang on to just yet. Soundgarden, this is a single. Uh, hands all over, pretty cool. Um, it had this in it. Basic Miles, I will probably sell this. Classic performances of Miles. I don't know, I'm not sure. I don't think I need that. I only have like a thousand Miles Davis right Mud Honey. Probably will keep this. This is pretty cool. Tomorrow's hits today. Tomorrow's hits today. Abdul Kaleem Jafar. I don't know. So a lot of a lot of this stuff I don't have sorted, so I'm kind of I'm looking at it with you here. Colonius Monk in Italy. I mean I figured maybe you guys might want to hang out and look through all this stuff. Family. I love this record, family. This is this is not an expensive record and nobody wants it and all of the records I think are great. I love the band Family. This has a die cut cover, really cool cover. Um, this is a great record, man. Uh, the Family as a, the band is a 70s, Family is a 70s band. Uh, this is what the die cut looks like. It's actually several covers. They had another one too, which looks like an old stereo, home stereo. Um, uh, Family is an awesome group from this 70s rock, kind of psychedelic rock era, late 60s, early 70s. Pretty well into the 70s, actually. But they're an awesome group. Uh, family's terrific. Um, <clears throat> skinny Puppy. <coughs> like I say, a lot of 90s kind of stuff. Stuff I definitely remember from the 90s. This one's a good one. The Gang of Four promo. Recorded March 1980. There's a ton of singles here. Boxes of singles. There's several boxes of singles. 
There's whole bags of CDs. Yeah, man. Family records are around. You, you know, you, you might be surprised. I think you will eventually see them. Because the, the thing is, it's not like they're that common, but nobody wants them, so they're out there, definitely. Kind of like Spirit. They're not that common. They didn't sell that many records, but they're around. Spirit and Family. There's a band called Help Yourself. <clears throat> All of those are great, great bands that people don't really know about. Which is crazy because they're awesome. They're really awesome. So I got this for my personal stash this week. This is a grail of mine. Dr. Strangely Strange. However, this is a free-ish, but still. Hey, hola. What's up? What's up, Costa? Hola, amigo. ¿Qué tal? Costa's not a Spanish speaker as far as I know. <laughs> He's from, from Greece. Anyway, doesn't matter. Yeah, um, Costa, I'm sure you know this record, Dr. Strangely Strange. I already have Kip of the Serenes, but I didn't have heavy petting, and this is a awesome record I really wanted. Psychedelic. Uh, oh, thanks. Find more mu music in a doll's house is a great record. Oh, great record. A lost classic. I bought some cunt classic country records. Oh, I'm sure it goes pretty good money. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Porter Wagoner, of course. These Porter Wagoner records were just... I, I picked them up because they were just perfect. I've been listening to a lot of classic country lately. Merle Haggard, Going Where the Lonely Go. This is a promo copy. Very nice copy of this. Last night I saw Dave, David Allen Coe in concert uh, for like 25 bucks and I brought my David Allen Co. records to try to get signed but I no such luck I, and I did pick this up recently a white label promo family album one I didn't have I'm on a mission to collect all these old David Co. Uh, David Allen Co. records um, I got some other David Allen Co. records recently um, and I already had a lot of this stuff but um, you know a lot of great it was great. Last night was he played like a medley of like classic. He's 80 years old, so the ride. Yeah, he played the ride. He played "You Never Even Called Me by My Name," which was written, co-written with uh, uh, Goodman, Steve Goodman. And um, anyway, he played all all this. He played Waylon songs, and he played uh, Tennessee whiskey the in the style of George Jones, not in the style of Chris Stapleton. It was fantastic. So yeah, there's more. More 90s stuff here from the Peyton collection I just bought. Smell the Magic. L7, which is a Seattle group in the, from the grunge era. Soundgarden, uh, Nirvana, all that kind of stuff. There's a bunch of Nirvana stuff in here, too. I actually sold a Nirvana record already to Kebby Metal in Seattle, who really wanted it. Some of the stuff I'll keep, some I won't keep. Sonny Stitt on 45 RPM, so this is probably audiophile quality. I might keep that, I don't know. Uh, Costa, do you know this record? This is Ginger Baker, Houses and Trees. Ginger Baker from Cream. Ginger Baker, Houses and Trees on Celluloid. Uh, this is, I think, a really interesting record, and, and Bernie Worrell, woo, Bernie Worrell, Worrell from Parliament is on this. Um, Nick Laswell is on this. It's got a bunch of African musicians, too. I think it's a really interesting record. Very African-inspired. Um, <clears throat> I got a Steve Ray Vaughan record here. I've always sold these, but I've lately, kind of like um, Tom Petty, I've been keeping them lately. I haven't been selling them. because Of course, I love Steve Ray Vaughan. Um, I got this at a Goodwill, the Atlanta Rhythm Section. This was the dollar record. Southern Rock Record, Atlanta Rhythm Section. <coughs> I love Southern Rock in general. But... Okay, so I'll go through some of this guy with you guys. I have no idea what some of this is. Weird Science Soundtrack. That's interesting. The John Hughes movie, Kelly LeBon. Never seen that Baker record. I, I Costa, I really think... Um, Ginger Baker's whole career is worth exploring. Even he even made some like met, almost kind of metalish records in the set in the '80s, which I think are kind of interesting. Uh, 
you know, the, the movie, uh, classic movie, oh yeah, I know, Weird Science, that's cool, isn't it, Corey? Yeah, there's a, there's a documentary called Beware of Mr. Baker, which is about Ginger Baker in his later years, and it's, he, you know, he's a notoriously cantankerous kind of person, but I think it's worth watching, it's super interesting, and he did all kinds of interesting work. Um, this box set was in there, Nigerian uh, Soul Power 1970. Afro funk, Afro rock, Afro disco. This was a record store day thing, I think. Ginger Baker's a mad genius, so I agree. This is all 45s uh, of. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you have seen the movie Costa. That that, I think that's cool. Beware, of Mr. Baker. I think all of Ginger Baker's stuff is really interesting. There's a Ginger Baker record called um, uh, Stradivarius. Um, which is not Ginger Baker's Air Force, although I love the Ginger Baker's Air Force records. I'm sure you have all that stuff, Costa. I mean, <clears throat> you've got all kinds of crazy awesome records, but it, I love Ginger Baker's Air Force. I mean, I love that stuff. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think everything Ginger Baker ever touched is kind of interesting. But yeah, this is really cool. This is a record store day thing. I think musically, I think this uh, Nigerian <coughs> Afro funk. Um, is you know afro um afro beat you know i think it's the greatest thing ever this psychedelic nigerian african music from the 70s i think it's just incredibly interesting and just wonderful i love it I love it musically i love that stuff there's tons of stuff in here i don't know what all is in here some elvis 45s um some beatles 45 picture sleeves of course, I already have a lot of this stuff, so some of it will be up for sale. But, you know, uh, Come Together is one of the classic tracks. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. I don't even know. Dinosaur Jr. Thank you. Yeah, I love that Afro box. I think it's killer. It's a record store thing. I don't really buy 7 inches on record store today, but, but I bought this whole collection. So there's boxes of CDs, boxes of 45s. Oh yeah, Witch, Dylan, no. Witch is a killer band. There's another band called The Funkies, which is kind of like The Monkees, but The Funkies and Witch. Witch, Witch is Lazy Bones. That's a killer uh, Afrobeat record. <laughs> Witch is a killer band. I mean, that shit is amazing. Oh, isn't it awesome, Dylan? I mean, I never heard that stuff. You know, when I heard that shit, I was like, <clears throat> oh man, it just blew my mind. I absolutely thought it was the coolest thing ever. Dire Straits. On tour in North America. I'll kind of show some of the picture sleeves first because it's easier to kind of. This is looks like a seam split. Stevie Nicks. Stand, stand back, stand back. The TV babies. This is some kind of small time group, I think. New York group. The TV babies. I have no idea. It's another Elvis. I, honestly, this is probably late 60s. Judy, There's Always Me. I, um, <clears throat> I'm most interested in buying a bunch of Elvis uh, 45s in a box like this. I really don't want to pay real money for them. The Rugby's, this is pretty cool. I love the Rugby's. Great 60s group, the Rugby's. Very slept on. There's some small time stuff here. The Florida Spiritual Airs, this is gospel. Um, there's some there's some nice original company sleeves. This, of course, I already have that 45, the Mermaids band. But this chest sleeve alone is is a good thing. I could I could pair that up with something. This is cool. An Ezra Mohawk promo, white label promo. Ezra Mohawk Jabberwock song, and it's up to me. Ezra Mohawk from Frank Zappa's band. Ezra Mohawk's records too. I also think are interesting. I already have this, of course, the Hollies carry in. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> There's several boxes of 45s. Tell me if you guys get bored here, because I don't know. <clears throat> Ooh, the Culture Club. There's tons of random shit here. That's Boy George, of course. I very much doubt I can do anything with that. Kim Carnes, you know, of course, everybody knows. Here's some more 80s stuff. The Blondie. 
Might be able to do something with this. I don't know. I doubt that I'll keep that. Uh, you know, selling 45s is a pain in the ass. But the show here, the Norfolk show, people want all kinds of stuff. Kiss, Detroit, Rock City. That's in the wrong sleeve. I, I believe. I, they, I don't know because Casablanca was distributed by different people. I, I, I think this is the wrong sleeve. I might have to research that. Frigid Pink. This is killer, actually. House of the Rising Sun um, in the right, in the correct sleeve. And this is a perfect sleeve. This, this is like a perfect copy of this, actually. Frigid Pink, Driving Blues, and House of the Rising Sun. This is an upgrade of my copy, actually. I have this, but that's an upgrade. That's killer. This is also an upgrade of my copy. Uh, Marvin Gaye's. Uh, Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Classic, but I have the correct sleeve for this. Although sometimes Tamla was also distributed in uh, plain brown wrappers. So, that's... Here's another one. Uh, heard it through the grapevine, of course. Oh, sorry. These are not, you know, uncommon, of course. But that, that is the correct sleeve. The, the uh, brown... Motown sleeve, I believe is correct. I heard it through the grapevine. I have a white label promo of this. So, that's pretty cool, though. Um, yeah. I think all these Kiss and Y uh, Casablanca label records are incorrect sleeves. There's a Harvest sleeve, of course, so I'll have to put that against the wind. So, this is, this is be a guilty pleasure, because I actually like this song, Against the Wind. I think it's a good song. And it was a huge hit. This one and Turn the Page are cheesy Bob Seger songs, but uh, they're good songs. They're good songs, man. That's why they were popular, you know. The Eagles had some good songs, too. Very good songs, man. I mean, unpopular opinions, I really don't care. You know, it's like, it happens. It is what it is, you know. Nice Funkadelic single. That's a killer Funkadelic single. I'm going to have to keep that. Hit it and quit it. <clears throat> of course, everybody knows what that, I think. A whole lot of BS, meaning a whole lot of bullshit. Hit it and quit it is the term that you use when you say you're going to have sex with someone and then leave them. Hit it and quit it. You're going to bust a nut and cut, as we used to say. This is a re-ish Funkadelic. One Nation Under a Groove. Yeah, but this is not a... You know, that's not original. That's a Warner Brothers thing. But this is a Westbound. That's killer. I'm going to probably keep that. There's an Al... Oh, Luther Vandross. There, there's all kinds of shit in here, you know. I, I have no idea. Earth, Wind, and Fire. These are cool. I saw this before, and I talked to Peyton about this. Peyton used to manage the record stores. He knows records. Um, Janice Harper on Prep. Uh, this is a sleeve I've never seen before. Prep sleeve. Um... And this is out of New York, so it's like, you know, not like a regional thing, but I've never seen that sleeve at all. I don't know anything about it. Um, there's some cool Keith Richards stuff. This one I think is super cool. The Ronettes. The Ronettes walking in the rain picture sleeve. I love the Ronettes. Of course, this is uh, Phil Spector's Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie Spector, the Ronettes walking in the rain. A girl group, famous girl group on Phil's records. This is a killer. I love that. <clears throat> Richie Richie Havens, famous for playing at Woodstock. Richie Havens, younger men get older. That's pretty cool. Um, here's the Keith Richards thing I was talking about. Oh no, Jumpin' Jack Flash, Aretha Franklin with Keith Richards. So there was a movie, a Whoopi Goldberg movie called Jumpin' Jack Flash in the '80s, as I recall. You guys tell me. I'm sure you guys know all this stuff. If I'm saying this wrong, tell me. But I I believe that was the Whoopi Goldberg movie in which Aretha Franklin paired up with um, Deep Purple, One More Rainy Day, and Hush. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, so let me show some inner... There, well, this is cool. The Inner Circle. That's reggae. I don't know what this is. I have no idea what that is. There's some crazy stuff. I don't know what it is. This looks interesting. I have no idea what it is. The Beach Boys. I already had that, of course. So anyway, 
Uh, I'm just going through this with you guys. There's tons and tons of stuff here. I don't even know what all's here. Lots of lots of singles, lots of LPs. Here's another crate of LPs. Let's see what's in it. Um, this is the Stones. Emotional Rescue. Sealed copy of Emotional Rescue, I think. I think this is, yeah, right? Yeah, Emotional Rescue, sealed copy of Emotional Rescue. That's pretty cool. Definitely. I I hate old ratty shrink rats, to be honest with you. Conway Twitty and Loretta Lynn. Louisiana Woman, Mississippi Man. This would be chud for a lot of people, but I love classic country, so. I actually bought a Loretta Lynn record. I love Loretta Lynn, man. I think she's terrific. Before I'm over you, I would like to see her before she passes on. I saw David Allen Coe last night. He's 80, so, you know, that's kind of... You got to take these opportunities. The Elvis Country record. So, yeah, I actually... You know, I actually wanted these records because I like them. You know, Elvis in Memphis. I like this record, too. You know, I, I, this has In the Ghetto on it and all that kind of stuff. I, I never collected... Uh, Elvis records at all. Now I've got a lot of them. I never collected them. Johnny Cash, Happiness is You. <clears throat> this is one of the Johnny Cash records I don't have. I have a ton of Johnny Cash records. I didn't have that one, so that's kind of cool. This is an original pressing of this. Billy Billy Joel, um, The Cold Spring Harbor. This is like what his first record, I believe. I have the reissue of this, and the, I'm told the reissue sounds better. This is the original pressing on Family... Um, family Productions. I already have this too, but this is pretty cool. Um, Outcast single. And I don't even collect this kind of stuff, but I particularly like this song. Hey Ya uh, and The Way You Move. Both great tracks. I think Hey Ya uh, is probably one of the best pop songs that we've had in the past like 15 years. This is a classic, excellent like you can't help but just dance to it and like it it's just a really you know what that other song um the uh, pharrell song or whatever that's like uh happy that's pharrell right isn't it yeah that song is a very infectious pop summer pop hit kind of song that almost anybody can't help but like uh whether you like that kind of music or not I think. Um, I'm listening to this right now. Black Sabbath. Past Lives. Shake it shake it like a Polaroid picture. <laughs> exactly. The, the video has got these beautiful girls. All these Lucy Lou's and Beyonce's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a... You know, how could you not... How could you deny it, you know? There's no way. Here's a... Beatles. This is a pretty cool Beatles. 45 picture sleeve. I just think this stuff is the coolest thing ever. So of course I love Beatles singles. How could how can I? So at the Goodwill I found a bunch of uh, broken 78s. And uh, which was a shame, but I did get some they were all like kind of old uh, country 78s which people love and go crazy for. Oki. I do have an orig original Oki 78 sleeve. I will put this in. I'm not even really a 78 collector. These are, I'm sure, very common by the standards of 78 collectors. I don't want to meet your daddy. Just want you in my caddy. Classic line. Carl Smith. Let old mother nature have her way, Carl Smith. Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys twin guitar special. And Lila Lou. I love this. I love Western Swing. I know... A lot of people don't, but you know, I, I've seen some guys like pick up Hank Williams 78s and enjoy them and have fun with them, and I think they're super cool. Also, Carl Smith, the most interesting ones were broken, which is a real shame. I picked up this classic bluegrass record, Rose Lee and Joe Mathis, who wrote, I was uh, playing a song recently called the Dim Lights, Thick Smoke, they wrote that song. This is a bluegrass record, an excellent, very fine bluegrass record. This is a classic in general. Rose Lee, made, Rose Lee is a, a, like in her 90s, but she was the greeter at the Country Music Hall of Fame for years, and nobody knew who she was. Pretty cool. Got this 
promo Phil Linnett album. Phil Linnett from Thin Lizzy. One of my personal musical heroes. He's just an awesome musician in general, I think. Phil Linnett. The Irish. The Black Irish leader of Thin Lizzy. The bass player of Thin Lizzy. is an awesome musician in general. I love that. And that was the one I didn't have that. Um, so, yeah, I don't even know. That was just a record I picked up for my own personal. This is a... Uh, Goodwill score, uh, UK folk, um, traditional folk, Jerry Hollum traveling down the castle road, uh, and this is signed by him on the back. This is something that Ben would appreciate. Ben in Limerick, England. What's up, Ben? Ben Costello. The DC Zone. Uh, I picked this up at Goodwill. I always see Hot Summer Nights. I never see Hot hot summer nights too hot august night too rather neil diamond i will likely sell this although i have a weird relationship with neil diamond i sell neil diamond stuff i usually don't keep neil diamond stuff but I, it's not like i dislike it um picked up this kind of soul you know d-list soul record i sell a ton of these here in this region there's tons of people who want cheap soul records marilyn mccu and billy davis jr um, yeah, cheap soul records I can I can do something with. Um, Coltrane. You know, tons of tons of uh, jazz uh, CDs. I love jazz CDs. I mean, selling CDs though right now, I don't know. I very much doubt that they'll move too much. Porgy and Bess, Miles Davis. Of course, everybody knows these records. On vinyl, this stuff would all be gold. Seven Steps to Heaven, Birth of the Cool. On vinyl, this stuff would all be just instant seller. I mean, you know, it could sell all this stuff. On CDs, eh, not so much. But musically, you know, man, it's great music. I didn't have this. I don't know if I'll keep it, though. Um, Cheap Trick. Cheap Trick's definitely one of those bands, though, that, like, I don't really listen to. So, you know, if I listen to it, I might actually enjoy it. You know, I have no idea. Four Generations of Miles. It's kind of a tribute thing, I think. Stanton Moore. Here's a signed, or rather a sealed uh, copy of, of Miles Davis Nefertiti. So I don't know. Maybe I could trade them. You know, I don't really know. Might be able to do something with them. Bessie Smith. <laughs> Neil Diamond has a weird relationship with lots of wet men. <laughs> Thelonious Monk with John Coltrane. Neil Diamond, or Neil Diamond had some good songs. Like, he actually is a good songwriter. Um, but, um, you know, I, like, for me to keep Neil Diamond records, it's just kind of, I mean, why? But, I, you know, I have a Neil Diamond CD, like, the greatest hit, the 60s hits, you know. Um, Red, Red Wine and, like, uh, Sweet Caroline and that kind of stuff. Those are all great songs, you know. And when you're a songwriter, like I am, you know, you can learn a lot from Neil Diamond because what he does is he does great things with chord progressions. You know? So I love Ben Webster in general. I think Ben Webster records are terrific. And uh, this is with Oscar Peterson. Not so much a fan of Oscar Peterson. I think uh, he's a great jazz musician. I think he's boring. I, I'll be straight with you. Uh, I think uh, I think a lot of Oscar Peterson's music is really boring and I won't usually listen to it. But... Uh, with Ben Webster, I'm interested because I love Ben Webster. Thelonious Monk. This is Japanese, obviously. This is sealed. Another Japanese Thelonious Monk thing. Some of the stuff I have on vinyl. Of course, I have this on vinyl. Max Roach in three-quarter time. Pretty cool. Lee Morgan. So I love Lee Morgan. It's just whole, you know, tons and tons of CDs here. Billy Holiday. B. Wasicki, Thinking Out Loud. I don't know this record at all. It looks interesting, actually. I might listen to that. Elvis box set. That's pretty cool. Might have to keep that. Not sure. Um, oh, this is Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly. I didn't even realize this was in here. Um, yeah, I might be able to do something with this. I... I might list. I might just keep this. 
Um, I have listened to a little bit of it online, and I thought it was interesting. Um, and people were raving about people in the VC were raving about this to pimp a butterfly. I had no idea that was in there. That's pretty cool. Uh, Michael Brecker. That's that's pretty new. That's like last year. First of all, the Brecker brothers way underrated, man. The Brecker brothers are great if you like um, if you like jazz. Michael Brecker, way underrated. They're amazing players. Chet Baker, that West Coast kind of sound. Chet Baker. This is another Chet Baker record. This is an actual Chet Baker studio album. I have this on vinyl. This is a killer record. It's called Peace with Buster Williams on bass. And if you're a jazz fan in general, I think if you um, if you see any record that says Buster Williams on it, buy it. And they're va they can be valuable too, Buster Williams records. They're very sought after. Chet Baker. I don't know that they're hugely valuable, but they are sought after. Chet Baker. Oh, Michael Brecker's terrific, man. <clears throat> oh, yeah, man. That's a great record. Um, the Brecker brothers are awesome. I mean, it's the kind of thing, like, you write it off. You see it at Goodwill, you're like, that's complete shit. And then when you listen to it, you're like, oh, this is really good. Amazing. Duke Ellington. Sam Jones. That's pretty cool. Sam Jones. This is Latin jazz. I don't know this guy at all. Gonzalo Ru uh, Rubicalba with Jack DeJanette and John Patitucci. That's pretty cool. Good morning. I don't know that record at all. I don't know every Latin jazz thing. That's pretty, I love Latin jazz. The way we play, Marquee Hill. Don't know this record, interesting. Dizzy Gillespie, kind of a late period, 1990 Dizzy Gillespie. That's pretty cool. This is some kind of world music thing. That's That'll be interesting. United Nations Orchestra, I'll be interested in hearing that. Porgy and Bess, this is uh, Ella Fitzgerald and uh, Louis Armstrong. And there was the, uh, Miles Davis, Porgy and Bess, too. A lot of people don't know Porgy and Bess is a play about a slave couple who are separated by slavery, and uh, it's a heartbreaking story and a heartbreaking song. On the sunny side of the street, Ella and, and Count Basie. I was listening recently to an interview with um, Marty Stewart from Marty Stewart and Fabulous Superlatives, who's kind of a country historian in his own right because he played with all kinds of historical you know played he played in Johnny Cash's band famously and he, when he was 12 years old he played flat with the uh, Earl Scruggs and um, he's played with the Solon family and all kinds of famous but he, but he has like a huge uh, country collection like 30,000 pieces including Johnny Cash's first black suit and all kinds of like they're gonna start a Marty Stewart uh, country uh, museum in his hometown in Mississippi but anyway, he was talking about how he loved Ella Fitzgerald's the way it was like, Ella plays this and Ella does that. And he was like, he wants to model his career after that, where like his records are kind of themed like Marty Stewart, the fabulous superlatives, like it's like Western, country Western, like the Western style of California. That's his most recent album. And then some of them are like bluegrass albums. Some of them are, you know, uh, themed kind of. Interesting. Um, but yeah, been, like I said, I've been listening to a lot of country lately in general. What do you guys want to look at? You want to look at 45s, CDs, or LPs? Well, of course you want to look at LPs. Let's, let's look at LPs first. I don't even know. There's a whole crate of stuff. I don't even know what's in this. Trouble Funk. I will sell that. I probably won't keep that. An Ice Cube single. With DOS effects. Check. You better check yourself before you wreck it, wreck yourself. Classic, of course. I will probably sell that too. That's a Yo MTV Raps thing. I remember that from back in the day. Elvis Mania. And uh, Beatle Mania. Professional studio mix. I have no idea what that is. I'm going to have to listen to that. Ice Cube. Ghetto Vet. The funny thing is these things aren't really that valuable. These kind of like old uh, rap See, this is cool. I might have to keep this. Gnarls Barkley Crazy uh, single. Also a great infectious pop single. Crazy. Does that make me crazy? What a killer song that is. <clears throat> great song. Terry Gibbs. Big band jazz. I'm going to sell this. I'm sure I will. Dream band. Terry Gibbs. I mean, I won't get any money for it. I might... Uh, I might even just listen to it. I'm not even sure what it'll do. Some of the, some of this stuff is straight, like Goodwill fodder, so it's kind of hard to say. 
Swinging with Terry Gibbs. I'm going to have to listen to that. I don't really know. Dracula and Frankenstein. Little kid thing. I probably will. Um, might, I might either keep this for uh, for Halloween or bust it out for my boys and see if they like it. Dracula, Frankenstein. Mike Harrison. <clears throat> this is cool. Um, I believe this is an interview with Mike Harrison from Spooky Tooth from 1980. I could be wrong. Here's another one. This is a radio interview from Mike Harrison from Spooky Tooth. Super interesting. I doubt that those are valuable in any way. I, I believe that's correct. But a name like Mike Harrison could be many guys. De La Soul, Just Say No. Just Say Go, rather. That's a single, De La Soul. This is pretty cool. I don't really collect, like, the, um, yo, MTV rap era kind of stuff. I don't collect, um, the Native Tongues movement or any of that kind of stuff. Although I think it's really cool. <clears throat> I love that kind of music. I think it's great. This is a song I remember from when I was a kid. There's no need to argue. Parents just don't understand. Mike's voice, yeah. <clears throat> um, Mike Harrison's Spooky Tooth is a great musician. I love. I like Mike Mike Harrison's solo albums too. Later, he kind of like fell off, and like uh, people didn't know who he was. He was a, Spooky Tooth's an awesome band. I would put Spooky Tooth in the in the category with Spirit and with uh, Family and with Help Yourself of great bands that you can find those records cheap, and those are great musically. Those are awesome records. If you like that kind of 70s rock, which I love, of course. What's up, Corey? You don't mean to bust my bubble? Girls of the world ain't nothing but trouble. That's what you were going to say. I was like, what are you, what are you talking about, Corey? <laughs> Girls of the world ain't nothing but trouble. Corey, I was like, what, do you, what, man? What are you about to tell me? <laughs> Girls of the world ain't nothing but trouble. Straight up. <laughs> That's what's up, Corey. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> Too funny, man. Yeah, classic. So this is from the 80s. This is uh, Will Smith, you know, of course. This is DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. <clears throat> the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. That was Will Smith. This is him right there. Young Will Smith. And his sidekick, DJ Jazzy Jeff from Philadelphia. This is the funniest song. My brother and I used to listen to this when I was a kid. <clears throat> listen to the tape over and over again and memorize all the lyrics. I will probably sell this, but it's super awesome. The only reason I'm selling this, I mean, this is really cool. only reason I'll sell it is just to, I don't have room for everything, but that is super awesome. Charlie Watts Orchestra <coughs> from, um, drummer from the Rolling Stones, Charlie Watts. I didn't have this. This is uh, obviously his solo stuff, but Charlie Watts is into jazz. I mean, he was always into jazz. He's always more primarily interested in jazz and blues than he was in rock and roll, according to him. And this is his one of his side projects. That's pretty cool. Ronnie Wood, now look. Summer mixtape, check it out. DJ Jazzy Jeff, a summer mixtape. I will check that out. That would be a good barbecue. I love a good barbecue cookout, you know. I already have this record, of course. This is a good record. Also a cheap record. Um, I... I personally think Ronnie Wood's solo records are much better than any other, other than Keith Richards. Keith Richards has some interesting solo records, but I think Ronnie Wood's solo projects were better uh, than almost anybody's. And Mick Jagger had some decent, uh, Primitive Cool's a decent record. I wouldn't say as good as Ronnie Wood's. This is not a good record in my opinion. The VIP is alive with a young Mike Harrison. I will check it out, Costa. I can only imagine. I... Costa, I bet you know things that I can't even... I would love to hang out with you, Costa. It would be too cool. I would love to look at your record shelves. It's just... Anyway, I'm not a big fan of this record. I think Bill Wyman is, in my opinion, is the weakest musician of the, of the entire band. But, you know, that being said, he's still not doing too bad. This is all uh, fodder. Gary Wright, you know, the Dreamweaver. Um, I've never listened to this record. I'm going to be honest with you. I've seen this record 10,000 times. I've had this record many times. I've, I've moved it and sold it and stuff. I don't, I've never listened to it. I might have to just listen to it. 
Best of Joe Walsh. This is all kind of cell fodder kind of stuff. I don't really need this. This is a promo copy of this. I will sell that, definitely. Eminem, The Real Slim Shady. Also a big hit song. I'm definitely going to sell this. You know, trying to just recoup some of my uh, Walk This Way, Run DMC. I'm not a big fan of 12-inch singles. However, I do think that uh, um, if you're going to do 12-inch singles, you want to do songs like this that everybody knows, you know, Walk This Way. Especially in this region, like, there's a lot of DJs and a lot of people looking for soul. And two Live Crew, uh, Me So Horny, and As Nasty As They Want To Be, with uh, Side B, Get The Fuck Out Of My House. Definitely, when I was a kid, um, everybody, you know, this was, I mean, when I was a little kid, we listened to tapes primarily, and uh, this attracted us because it was, um, we thought it was, you know, transgressive at the time. Me so horny. There was a movie, okay, backing up, for just for context, <clears throat> there was a movie called uh, Full Metal Jacket, which is about Vietnam, which is a very in-your-face kind of movie. Um, who, who's the director? The, you know, the famous director, the uh, Eyes Wide Shut director, uh, one of the great, one of the greatest directors who ever lived. The, the, my, the, uh, Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick was the director of, uh, of Full Metal Jacket, a movie about Vietnam, which is a very gritty, in-your-face, very raw uh, movie of um, anyway, in the in it, there's a Vietnamese prostitute who's uh, soliciting the American soldiers, and she says, "Me love you long time, me so horny," with a kind of broken English. "Me so horny, me love you long time, little Vietnamese prostitute." And that's where this t uh, song title came from, "Me so horny." Um, I'm sure most of you will remember this, and I mean, this is this is like very explicit, and this is where these. Uh, these uh, says stop the violence movement and they they also came up with like parental um, advisory stickers you know which was a which was a kind of a, a Senate hearing thing that happened from uh, a lady named Tipper Gore who was the wife of then vice president Al Gore who was the vice president of Bill Clinton in the 90s and uh she was a kind of a middle class mom type who was like, our kids are listening to this explicit music and the parents aren't aware that they're buying this for them. And, uh, you know, you got a spanking for listening to that. Yeah, this is definitely like your parents burned these tapes, you know, you get in trouble. Me so horny, you know. I won't keep this, but it's kind of cool. Uh, somebody might want that, you know. Maurice, this is acid, a new dance craze. <clears throat> you know, acid house, house kind of music or whatever. Mario, Just a Friend. I believe this is the same track, uh, you know. You say he's just a friend, you know. Anyway, more LPs. Let's look at some more LPs. I don't know. A lot of this is kind of cell fodder. Some of it is goodwill, straight up goodwill fodder. I don't know. Um... I actually already had this record. Uh, this is Count Basie and uh, Frank Sinatra. Of course, I love Frank Sinatra. I already have this record too. Funky Christmas. This might be a re. This might be an upgrade of my. I have a whole box of country of uh, Christmas records, including a lot of soul and funk Christmas records. I love to bust them out at Christmas. Um, this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. That's probably Goodwill fodder. Dave Rose. I, I don't know what some of this is. This is another Sinatra thing. So, I actually have a ton of Sinatra records, but, um, you know, you gotta be careful like Sinatra. Like, whereas, like, I'll have, like, 10, 20, 50, 50 Johnny Cash D-list Johnny Cash records, like, Sinatra records, I'm not, I don't want to go down that road too much. <coughs> Excuse me, it's a dusty. This is all barn fresh stuff. Um, basement fresh. This is a sealed Rolling Stone. I don't have this record either. Undercover of the Night. Again, the Rolling Stones is another kind of whole cubicle kind of act. And I didn't have this, so that's kind of cool. Frankie Valley didn't have this. I don't know whether I'll keep this or not. Kind of like a um, 
kind of like a Neil Diamond type of act. I mean, the talent is real. The songs are great. 1963 is a great song. Late December 1963 is a great song. He had lots of great songs. Um, Coma Sibella. Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of like, hit song stuff. I'll probably sell it. I don't really know. I'm sure I'll sell it. Don't Walk Boogie. This is a uh, kind of a disco comp. That is interesting. I'll I'll sell that. Sure. I'll just, it won't be a lot of money, but those kind of things, they move, you know, the kind of disco, funk, soul kind of records. There's a Frank Sinatra record, which I didn't have that old feeling. This is a Six Eye Columbia. I'm almost positive. Yeah. Perfect Six Eye. Yeah, great Frank Sinatra record in great condition, too. And I didn't have this. So, Frank Sinatra is an artist. He's a whole cubicle kind of artist. I have tons of his records. Um, Water Town. And I actually sell these, believe it or not, man. People want these Sinatra like this. Of course, I already have this. Um, but, yeah, people buy these, man. Very much so. Come Swing With Me. I don't have this, but I'm not sure about the condition of this. I'm not sure if I'll keep that or not. Uh, it doesn't have any seam splits, but I'm not, I'll have to listen to it and see how it sounds. If it sounds good, I might keep it. Frank Sinatra, No One Cares. I already have this, too. Might have to compare it to my copy and see. But I'll, I'll sell those, you know. Uh, I don't get a ton of money for them, but... Mick Taylor, famously played with the Stones. This is a good record. This is a promo copy. I actually like this record quite a bit. 70s a Mick Taylor solo record. This is this is a uh, perfect for selling James Taylor's greatest hits. If I were if I'm selling records, I actually want uh, crates and crates full of records like this. Like Art Simon and Garfunkel's greatest hits, James Taylor's greatest hits, Carly Simon's greatest hits. Fucking uh, uh, the Fleetwood Mac rumors, uh, you know, Stevie Nicks, like, uh, that kind of stuff moves, you know, people want that stuff, uh, you'd be surprised, like, there's always people want, like, Joni Mitchell records and stuff like that, um, Daddy, James Franco and Kim, o, uh, Tim O'Keefe, Very interesting. This would. Be, this is 2016. It's relatively modern. James Franco is an actor. Um, I don't know if this is connected to Record Store Day or not. It might be. I don't actually know. Newberry Comics limited edition of 500. Probably try to sell this online. I might listen to it online first because I don't know what it sounds like. But yeah, that's that's cool. And that's the kind of stuff that kind of helped me just re recoup my cost of buying this collection. It wasn't terrible price per unit was really really low but a lot of these units are not necessarily you know movable super movable stuff um of course i already have this i have multiple copies of this actually <clears throat> this is a six eye columbia i'll probably have to compare this to my copy but this is an original probably a first press i do have at least three pressings of this record so i'll have to compare it to my my own so, yeah, processing these things is harder for me because I collect, too. So, you know, Elvis, 70s era Elvis, the U.S. Mail. This is a Pickwick thing. So, this is a uh, uh, comp. This, I definitely don't collect stuff like this. and probably sell this. Uh, but like I say, I mean, I have a lot of Elvis records for a guy that, for, for not collecting Elvis records, I have a lot of them. Easy come, easy go. What makes it tough is, honestly, these on, these usually have the best songs. Like, this has a little less conversation, which I think is one of his great, you know, like, Suspicious Minds and a little less conversation and In the Ghetto and these kind of, um, those kind of hits, like, Bur you know, Burn and Love. Like, to me, those are all, like, fun songs, you know. Some more kid stuff, Christmas thing. Snoopy. Here's one of those. But some people really want these, too, believe it or not. These, uh, um... Halloween, kind of old Halloween, chillers and thrillers, the spooky, you know, DJs want these and stuff, like, it's, it's funny, here's another one, Halloween, ter Halloween horrors, these definitely move, selling at record shows and stuff, people really want this, so they're not expensive, people will buy them, you know, you'd be surprised, Errol Garner, I think musically these are good, nobody will buy that, at all, here's another record nobody will buy, 
but I mean, I say that, but people do buy all kinds of crazy shit. Johnny Hodges, Wild Bill Davis. I would think that this would be a Goodwill record, but people will buy this stuff. How to belly dance for your husband. You know, girls will come to these things and they'll be like, I just want to have something to hang up on my wall and, you know, to decorate and stuff. I mean, like, man, you'd be, you'd be surprised. Not, not everybody is, you know, we don't all have the same mentality about stuff. Not everybody's a crazy collector type, you know. There's, there's all kinds of people. Here's another one, which I could probably sell. How to strip for your husband. Believe it or not, man, like, there are people who want that stuff. Um, flamenco. I will definitely listen to this. Sabicas, Flamenco Virtuoso. I'll definitely listen to that. That might be cool. Orange Blossom Special. Of course, I already have this. This is a mono, original 6i mono. I'll have to compare my copy to this. Classic, though. That's really nice. First pressing. Uh... Iron Eagle soundtrack, the old 80s movie. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, man? Um, sound effects in stereo. This is a library kind of thing. Wagner box set. I mean, I don't know. Some people collect classical. I have friends who like classical stuff. On uh, Marty in New Hampshire loves classical, and I probably so. Send him a bunch of stuff. Smashing Pumpkins, the 1979 mixes. This is pretty cool. The song uh, 1979. This is a more recent uh, Smashing Pumpkins record, Oceana. This is 2012. I remember buying this CD because I, I bought it and listened to it when I visited a guy in the VC in, in, in uh, Ohio, uh, McSopey. I visited uh, Dave McSopey and uh, drove back from Ohio to Indiana and listened to Oceana. I thought it was a nice record, actually. So, I'm not sure what I'll do with that, but, you know, I got a ton of Smashing Pumpkin stuff from, from uh, Peyton. I don't have this Sinatra record either, close to you. This is a really nice condition. Um, I don't know anything about this Sunshine soundtrack. Uh, people, some people love soundtracks, so I don't know. Okay, boxes of 45s. Whole boxes of 45s. I don't even know what all's in it. More Elvis. Guitar Man. I always love this cover, Guitar Man. There's Burning Love. Raised on Rock. The Stones Play with Fire. The Stones, congratulations. And this is Time is on My Side. Of course, I already have that. Jive and Sister Fanny and Out of Time on Abco. This is a reissue, I'm sure. Good Times, Bad Times. It's all over now. What a shame and Heart of Stone. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of stones, a lot of Elvis, a lot of Beatles, you know, kind of stuff. The Kinks. Here's a really good one. The Kinks. Uh, more Elvis. Just for you. This is the way to buy Elvis singles, just buy a whole box of them, you know. This is not necessarily the best Elvis singles, but that's okay. Uh, free, Mouthful of Grass, and All Right Now, their big hit, All Right Now. Free, I love the band Free, in general. This one's really cool, Ella Fitzgerald. That's a, that's a really cool single right there. I'm definitely going to keep that. I think that's just killer. I just love the way that looks, even. Isn't that awesome? <clears throat> okay. Uh, the Stones. Only rock and roll, but I like it. That's, I think, an incorrect sleeve. I'm almost positive that's an incorrect sleeve. Waiting on a friend and little TNA. So I can have that. What is this? Les Brown. I don't want that. I don't need that at all. More Stones. More Dire Straits. Man, there's just tons of stuff here. The Beatles, She Loves You. I'll get you on Swan. Of course, I already have that. That might be a better copy than mine. Uh, this is kind of cool. Dude looks like a lady. Dude looks like a lady. What a what a silly song. <laughs> this the Aerosmith had a had some silly songs, but you know you can't deny. I always think this is the coolest thing ever. The, I already have this, but uh, the Doors. Tell all the people that you see. 
honestly, I think the Doris formula is very unique. Not 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 very many people have been able to replicate what the Doris had. You know, I don't think. Ragdoll. These are fun, man. Ragdoll. Um, I don't really collect this kind of thing, but tell me this isn't really fun. Of course, everybody remembers this song. This is a straight-up Aerosmith song. Like Nobody else could do this song. Uh, only Aerosmith. You know, they're just a unique act in general. Uh, the Beatles. There's a place. This is pretty cool. And Twist and Shout. Definitely pretty cool. More Elvis. So, yeah, I feel like Mean Mr. Mayo right now. Elvis sings. Yeah, people want these things. Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. I want you to be my girl on G. Of course, Frankie Lyman was only... Uh, I'm not a know-it-all. Frankie Lyman was only like 13 years old. He died of heroin. And Frankie Lyman is like the ultimate music industry story of just like never let your kids be a child star in, in any way. Al Green, Let It Shine on the original with the original high sleeve. This is pretty cool. I actually really like those. I'll keep that too, definitely. This is cool. Led Zeppelin, Trampled Underfoot and Black uh, Black Country Woman. I always liked Black Country Woman. Uh, this this reminds me of, um, of Vance in Chicago, he loves Led Zeppelin. And Rob. Rob uh, in Boston loves Led Zeppelin, of course. Uh, trampled Underfoot. I think this is rad, you know. This is probably the original sleeve, the Atlantic sleeve, because they were on Atlantic. This, this was their label swan song, but they were distributed by Atlantic, I'm sure. They were famously on Atlantic. Here's an old Atlantic. Over the hills and far away. This is not the correct sleeve, of course. I, I can put this in the right sleeve. Dancing Days. I have a lot of those. I don't have all of them. Another Elvis. Pretty awesome. Uh, reissued. Eddie Cochran, uh, Cross Cut Shorty and Summertime Blues. You know what I do with these? Yeah, those are cool, right? Those are the Zeppelin 45. What I do with these, these reissues like this, this these are cool songs, Cross Cut Shorty and uh, Summertime Blues. This is not valuable. This is a cheap reissue thing. Uh, my little kid has a uh, um, a little turntable thing, a little Crosley turntable thing, and he likes to play his little 45s on there. We do it as like, you know, for fun. And I keep these kind of, I have a whole stack of these, and they're all good, you know, the music's all good, but they're not valuable or anything. But we play together with them, you know, just, just playing with them. It's pretty cool. Queen, Flash Gordon. This stuff's like common, you know, relatively common stuff, but it's still fun stuff, definitely. Uh, the Runaways. I just got a Runaways LP recently, which I thought was really good. I liked it a lot. Van Halen. Jump. Everybody remembers this song. This is a Pointer Sisters song, right? Jump. Uh, and they had a lot of fun songs. Panama. Uh, hot for teacher and again they're they're a unique act van halen i mean only they could only do these cheesy kind of songs and they did them so well the guitar was so good and it was just fun you know um they're very fun i mean jump is a fun song i think this is cool i like it i don't know if i will keep it but i want to kind of record store day Jimi hendrix this is dope purple haze I don't buy any of this stuff. It all seems like a cash in to me. The more recent, uh, that's not true. I have some of it. I think it's awesome. I mean, I'm glad they're re releasing Hendrix stuff. I think that's killer. Um, it, it is definitely a family cash in. But then again, like his family should make him. I mean, God knows everybody else did. But that's cool as hell. I didn't have that. Probably one of the best tracks of my whole childhood. I mean, like uh, one of the best songs. A great radio friendly song which is just a great rock and roll song in general it kind of harkens back to the golden era of rock and roll you know at the time the people were hoping it usher in a revival of classic rock style of course it didn't but too bad because that was great that and like the black crows and stuff the beach boys <clears throat> promo copy of wouldn't it be nice this is dope as fuck actually i didn't even know this was in here Mono and Stereo, Wouldn't It Be Nice. One of the great songs ever. Ode, Ode um, 70 label. This is cool shit. 
I really like that. And I have the original Ode sleeve. That's really cool. I'm definitely keeping that. The Trogs on Fontana. On Fontana. Love is all around. And uh, when the when will the rain come with the original Fontana sleeve. I already have this. I need the sleeve more than anything because I have other Fontana things. But this is definitely a good, good track, you know. Great, great. I love the Trogs in general. R.E.M. It's the end of the world as we know it. I can't stand this song. Uh, overplayed radio song to the point that it's just like, even just singing that right there just made me want to get nauseous. I can't take it. But I think R.E.M. is a good band. Uh, they were just so successful. They make me sick. Can't fight this feeling. Also a horrifying radio earworm. Oh, God. I don't even want to sing it. I won't even do that to you. Uh, this is Russian. I have no idea. Send it to you. You want it? <laughs> Somebody will want it, man. I will. I mean, I had to buy this collection. I will sell it. It's the thing is that like some things I'll keep, some things I'll sell. You know, I mean, I had to buy it, so I gotta, I gotta try to get my money back. This is really cool. Aretha Franklin EP, Atlantic EP with uh, "Let It Be" and "The Weight" and Eleanor Rigby. Obviously, "Let It Be" and Eleanor Rigby are Beatles songs, and "The Weight" is the band. And this girl's in love with you is a Burt Bacharach and um, Hal David song. And share your love with me. Um, this is a produced in Muscle Shoals. I didn't even know this existed. This is a, a some kind of prom promo EP. That's cool as hell, actually. Aretha Franklin's another one. Loretta Lynn, Loretta Lynn, Aretha Franklin. I would like to see them before they die, and it won't be long. Al Green. You know, the stones, like, you know, if you don't do it now, you know, you won't, you can't do it forever. All down the line. And Happy. I already have this, but yeah. Happy is probably one of my favorite. All Down the Line is a great song, too, from the Exile on Main Street era, of course. But uh, Happy is one of my all-time favorite uh, Rolling Stones tracks in general. So, yeah, there's pretty good stuff in here. You know, Brian Adams, Summer of 69. I'll definitely sell this. Very famous song. It was the summer of 69. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Um, I like Ryan Adams. Brian Adams, I kind of can't stand. But uh, maybe somebody will want it. Uh, he just kind of seemed like a like a less original um, John Mellencamp. And very formulaic. And it seemed like in the summer of 69, he was like 13 years old or something. Elvis Presley, Thinking About You, and My Boy. Alive and Kicking, Simple Minds. That's an 80s thing. Don't You Forget About Me. <clears throat> that was their hit. That's uh, That was from the soundtrack to the movie The Breakfast Club. Another John Hughes movie, The Breakfast Club. Classic 80s movie, um, Don't You Forget About Me. Which is a really, honestly... So there was this thing in the 80s where, like, there was this poignant kind of songwriting, like, this really kind of, like, um, some might say syrupy, but kind of cloying, poignant kind of, uh, kind of emotive kind of songwriting that was really popular at the time. Like, all the radio had this, it was just a weird zeitgeist at the time that a song like this would be a huge hit, Don't You Forget About Me. Very nostalgic, very kind of heartbroken kind of song. Sad. <laughs> White, I don't know. Good love and gone bad, bad company. Hey, hello, cheers, mate. Cheers. <laughs> uh, good love and gone bad, bad company. Obviously, this is the guys from Free. This is uh Paul Gilbert, right? Um, bad company. Mono and stereo. This is in perfect condition. Somebody might want this. I doubt that I'll keep that. Although I collect 70s rock, like, but I don't I don't necessarily need that. I'm not sure. Dancing in the Dark. Another Stones thing with uh, David Bowie, right? Yeah. I collect a lot of Stones singles. I don't do necessarily do everything. This is a thing, like, are you be, like, a completist about stuff? Do you need everything, you know? This is a floppy uh, plexi disc thing of um, the Who's Pinball Wizard. Kind of cool. Aerosmith come together. The Beatles cover. Steve Miller Band. The Joker. I'm a smoker. 
I'm a toker. I'm a midnight poker in the behind. Elvis Presley, good rocking tonight. German, good rocking tonight. It's kind of cool. There's more LPs here. There's tons of CDs. I don't even know. There's like whole boxes of CDs here. Um, I think a lot of this is classical. I'm not sure what I'll do with it. I'll probably send it to Marty. Uh, I don't know if he wants a whole box of, of CDs, but, you know, he might. There's some other stuff. Hank Williams Jr. Uh, there's Metallica's Kill Em All. There's all kinds of stuff. I haven't even gone through this, but I think a lot of this is is classical, you know. I know classical collectors like CDs. It's Mozart with uh, Andres Schiff uh, performing on the piano. This bores me to tears. I don't like piano based classical generally speaking although i like a lot of classical music i tend to like violin based classical uh i'm not i love bach i love beethoven of course there's carl orff i'm not really a, um uh, a fan of uh debussy i think debussy is super boring here's a debussy thing claude debussy i think uh, claude debussy is one of the most boring composers ever in my opinion but it's beautiful you know some people love that stuff. There's tons of, tons and tons of, there's just whole boxes of this stuff. I don't even know what all's in this. Um, this is Brazilian, Jose Antonio Nacon. I believe that's a Brazilian uh, um, classical guitar style, and it's signed by him. I don't really know. Here's another signed thing. Tokyo String Quartet. This is Brahms. That's signed. The Black Sabbath, Born Again. You know. Uh, Pink Floyd, Delicate Sound of Thunder. I don't know what that is. What is this? This is the Exploding Eyes Orchestra. I have no idea what that is. Might have to listen to this next. Might have to put this on. Um, yeah. So there's more stuff. There's whole boxes of, of, of LPs. I haven't even really gotten to all this. I don't even know what all this is. Ella Fitzgerald. That's cool. I didn't have that. Ella Fitzgerald is kind of a whole cubicle artist for me, you know? Like, I love Ella Fitzgerald. Paul Revere and the Raiders. This is a perfect copy of this. Um, so, here's the thing. These records are really common, and they're really cheap, and I think a lot of times they're way better than you might think they are. Uh, to listen to these, this is definitely a Goodwill kind of fodder, but uh, to listen to this stuff... I'm like, wow, a lot of this is actually kind of excellent, but they're just really corny with the costumes and stuff, so you don't really like necessarily, kind of like Dave Clark Five type, you know, it's very corny and, and dated, but musically, it's like kind of awesome. Their songs are great. Uh, this is another kind of record I was talking about uh, that I could sell, you know, James Taylor, One Man Dog. Like, I can totally sell this kind of stuff. I mean, people will want this. Where did I score these? I bought these from a, a guy named P uh, Peyton. Uh, a local guy who uh, used to manage a record store and and he's a uh, you know young guy but he's moving on with his life and uh, wants to offload all of his stuff he's from the DC era uh, area he had a lot of DC hardcore and that stuff he was like real partial to like he had signed Fugazi record it was signed to him and um, and I didn't press him like I, I offered him more to for his personal stash but he didn't want to part with it and I totally understand and I and you know we kind of did each other a favor it was tough you know but we did each other a favor because like I gave him a fair price and he gave me a fair price per unit I got a really good deal of course but uh, when you go sell collections to um, stores and stuff man they give you pennies on the dollar they give you just nothing uh, per per unit they give you really terrible uh, money. So, um, and he knows that because he used to be a buyer in a record store. So we kind of did each other a solid and, uh, he's a, he's a very nice guy, very good dude. And, and I told him, you know, like if, if there's anything you're partial to, cause like he had some records that belonged to his grandfather and stuff and like nobody understands the sentimental value of things better than I do. I was like, if you, if you later discover that, uh, you accidentally, uh, sold me your grandfather's record or something or something that was signed to you personally or whatever, man, I'll return it to you. I live like 10 minutes away. I was, I told him, you know, I try to be just like honest with people, man. I'm like, you know, I can't like some of this stuff. It's like, I can do something with, but some of it I can't, you know, uh, 
like I th I think all these classical CDs are cool, but like to 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 do anything with them, oh man, it's like virtually you know, <laughs> I mean, the amount of work you know. Yeah, I think you know we did okay. I did okay so far, but you know you buy a collection like this, Costa, and it's like thirty percent of it is definitely sellable good stuff. You know, thirty percent of it is like maybe, and and thirty percent of it is like junk. You know, I mean, there's there's some solid goodwill crap in here too. You know. Uh, but you know, I mean, a lot of it I could I could probably move. I mean, it's it's clean at least, you know, and that helps a lot. You know, a lot of this stuff I could I could probably move for sure. Best of Kansas, like yeah, this is kind of stuff that uh, this is all sellable kind of stuff. Mop the hoople. I a lot of this I will probably compare to my own copy and see if this is a, this might be a better copy than my own copy. A pretty clean copy of that classic album, All the Young Dudes. Famous famous song that David Bowie made famous. That's a good copy of that. I'll probably have to compare that to my own copy. You know, I already have like I already have a lot of this stuff. Earl Bostic, Altitude. The Marquis, the Great Memphis Sound. This is a Memphis Final Gym record in uh, in Shrink. It's pretty cool. Everly Brothers, date with the Everly Brothers. He has ten bucks on this. I don't think it'll sell at ten bucks. I think it would sell at two, three to four, two to four dollars. You know. Uh, would you go to sell at a fair? Do you go to Discogs? I do sell at. Um, I was selling Discogs and stuff, but I don't mess around. If it's an online thing, Costa, I would only sell stuff that's a little bit more valuable or rare. I don't even really bother. Uh, if Unless it's like, a, you know, a little higher end, then I'll mess around. with Because you got to take it to the post office to paint it the ass. Um, it's not worth it if it's not at least a $20 record, in my opinion. Uh, but like selling at a, a record shows and stuff, you know, I'll just put like, uh, like stuff like this. Like I'll have a box of... Uh, soul and jazz and funk and then i'll have a box of rock and i'll have a box of you know whatever blues reggae you know depending on how much i have you know and then i'll just box it up and put a sticker and then i would sell this for like two to five bucks you know um this that's the price that people want to pay for records anyway so that they'll move you know and when you buy a whole collection like this and you get it you know cheap per unit so i would probably ask 10 10 to to twenty dollars for this, uh, David Gilmore, uh, maybe uh, maybe less, maybe seven. I mean, it would definitely move at seven or eight bucks. I think David Gilmore's promo, uh, David Gilmore's solo record. Uh, I believe this is a reissue. Um, yeah, it has to be because it's got a barcode and it's a nineteen seventy eight album. The barcodes didn't really come around till early eighties. Uh, how much do you pay approximately for the show? I think. Uh, in the Norfolk show, there's no charge uh, per table, but like in the Richmond show, I think it was like forty dollars per table. But the Richmond show is kind of, I don't think that great. In in the Denver, which is a much bigger show, it was like twenty dollars per table, which is, uh, you know, very doable because you could you could get, you could sell you got to sell of course you got to sell twenty bucks uh, worth of. Uh, records to get your money back for the show, you know. Uh, but it's worth it, you know, because especially when you're. Like, a lot of people bring really good records and then don't sell any of them, you know? They're all bringing records that are rare, valuable, you know, $50 and up kind of records. It's like, not that many people want those kind of records. Tons of people want the 2 two to $10 records. I, I would recommend, if you're selling records, sell lots and lots of 2 to $10 records because, I mean, it adds up, you know? If you sell a lot of $5 records, I mean, it really adds up quick. And, and you know, when you're when you're bringing carts of records, you know, boxes and boxes of records. Like, you don't want to return with, you want to return with as little as possible, man. They're heavy, and you want to, you want to be moving them, you know. That's what I think, uh, especially when you're buying all this stuff, and you got to process all this stuff. It's a lot of work, you know. I mean, it's a labor of love. I only do it because I like doing it. It's like one of the guys said, uh, if I told my wife what I make doing this per hour, you know, <laughs> It's not like a hugely lucrative thing, you know, it's, it's, it's for fun, you know, it's for fun. And I only do this, um, to feed the monkey, you know, rhythm is my business, Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah. I mean, I, I only sell records just to feed the monkey. I mean, just cause I love it. I love music and I love records. I don't do it because it's so lucrative or it's such a good investment of my time and money. Not, not necessarily, you know, blue suede hooked on a feeling.
Everybody knows this record. Ah, I'm hooked on a feeling. Da -da 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 -da. You know, I'm high on belief. This is cool. Shonen knife. This is a, um, you know, litany of the knife. This is, uh, what, Sonic Youth? Uh, God, what, this is a comp of, like, with, like, Sonic Youth and L7 and Red Cross and 3 O'Clock and uh, Pussy Willows and Big Dipper, and it's kind of cool. <clears throat> um, yeah. Deutsch Gramophone. German Deutsch Gramophone. Carmina Barana. Another one of these. So there's multiple copies of this. Halloween thing. Orson Welles. Oh, this is a cool record. I don't actually have this. Roland Cork. Uh, Roland Kirk. Talk, I Talk With Spirits. It's got a little unfortunate water damage here at the bottom. Uh, but yeah, I Talk With the Spirits. I like Roland Kirk a lot. I think really interesting music. Dizzy Gillespie and Stan Getz. Diz and Getz. I don't know what pressing this is. I doubt that this is valuable in any way, but this is an old, yeah, Verve. I don't know, maybe it is. I know some people really want these Verve records. Um, uh, Bach Brandenburg Concertos. Don't know what I could do with that. Probably not much. Oh, yeah, here's cool. Mahogany Rush. I really like Mahogany Rush. I like uh, Frank Marino records. I, I like all that stuff. I think they're oftentimes really fun. Uh, more Elvis. Elvis in concert. And this is like a big multi-disc thing. 70s Elvis. Yeah, Verve does have a cool label. I agree. Um, this is another, you know, this, I mean, if I had crates of just, this, like saying, like James Taylor, Fleetwood Mac, um, uh, I would, I would just like bring nothing but that stuff if I could. If it was just like whole like shows of just like Joni Mitchell and James Taylor and Fleetwood Mac and um, uh, you know C Credence Clearwater Revival and uh, Simon and Garfunkel and that kind of stuff and that stuff people really buy that stuff Elvis uh, more Elvis tons of Elvis Stanley Turrentine here's James Brown living in America I live in America this is from Rocky four is that rocky four rocky one is the origin story that was the good one in my opinion rocky two is with mr t right am i right no rocky two is with apollo creed with carl weathers rocky three is mr t and rocky four is dolph lundgren which is a cold war era um jingoistic movie uh, in which james brown comes out and does this whole huge production song which was a very like a, a nationalistic kind of song must have over 100 james brown records yeah i didn't need this it, it, it really i don't need this but now that i got it like why should i sell it i don't know <laughs> i don't know the firm this is definitely a good will fodder kind of record but uh, this is jimmy page and paul rogers earlier i was talking about free and i said paul gilbert i meant paul rogers uh, that was a brain fart Paul Gilbert is a different dude. Paul Rogers is what I was talking about with Free. And they 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 paired up. And, and Paul Rogers was also in Bad Company, which was produced by Led Zeppelin's record company, uh, uh, Swan Song. Bad Company was a huge hit for them. They probably made a ton of money off of that. Rocky Three is the best. Reporter asked Clubber, what's his prediction for the fight? Clubber responds, pain. <laughs> Classic, dude. Classic. The Rolling Stones now. Um, mono. <laughs> oh, hanging with Bo this morning. Hanging with Costa. Hanging with Corey. Hanging with all you guys. The Rolling Stones. I mean, I could sell these records, man. I mean, you know, they're common, but like... People want them, you know, definitely. I have no idea what this is. Katerina Val Valente. Uh, Cuban, maybe? Is that is that kind of like Cuban, you know, 50s big band, Cuban kind of Havana kind of shit? You know, I don't really know. 60s pop. This is Lightning Strikes with Lou Christie. 
Um, I could probably sell it. I don't really know. Maybe somebody will want it. More Elvis. Double dynamite. American? Is she American? Cuban-American, probably. Caterina Valente. Um, uh, probably Cuban-American. Malagena. Fiesta Cubana is on this. Fiesta Cubana. Malagena. Malagena. That's interesting because in that... Earlier I was talking about this this book that was in here. Uh, this is... Uh, Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones book about how his grandfather Gus gave him his first guitar and taught him to play Malagena, which is a little uh, Malagena, little Spanish guitar song. And uh, interesting. So, yeah. Anyway. Some more Spanish shit. Uh, Vuelven de nuevo los reyes del norte. That means the kings from the north, Los Reyes del Norte. Vuelven de Nuevo means like um, the new thing, right? Kind of the new, t you know, the new thing. I would translate it that way. The new thing from the, the northern kings. De un rancho a otra. On one, on one ranch or another. De California te escribo. I'm writing you from California. And mi ultima carta, my last letter. Dos hombres un, 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 y una traidora. I don't know what that is. Two men and something. Seria un flor. I will give you a flower. Por un bien de, de los dos. For the good of two. Por el bien de los dos. El in, in, eh, as it impossible, it's impossible. This is probably crappy. This is probably like Banda type shit. I would, I would think that's probably a crappy record. Bud Powell moods, cool old jazz record, but in fucked up shape. And uh, in good, a goodwill kind of record. Luckily, it was in this sleeve, so the the uh, Norgren Records, pretty rare label, pretty pretty decent condition for the platter but the jacket is all fucked up this is a kind of a fucked up goodwill jazz record bud powell's moods that's cool though i will put this in a in a sleeve in a good sleeve uh and uh try to like rehab it you know sometimes you can take these when you have these seam splits like this you can repair this and the way i would repair it is i would take a, a piece of cardboard on the inside and glue it on the inside to to then make this seam uh, more stabilized. So I would kind of do surgery on a record like this. And I, I often do, especially since it's totally salvageable and it's kind of a rare, cool record. Especially old jazz records, I think, are worth it. Um, Stan Getz, Lucky Thompson, Modern Jazz Society. This is not a... Is the sleeve from what? What did it say? Is the sleeve from... I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't see your comment. Mr. Hankey's Christmas Classics. <laughs> I do collect Christmas records, but I won't keep this. This is, um, Mr. Hankey is a character who is a turd from the cartoon South Park. Yes, that's true. He's an actual turd. He is a piece of feces. Uh, and this has, like, um, tasteless c comedic tracks like A Lonely Jew on Christmas and uh, and it's sung in the, the annoying uh, cartoon voice of these characters. And they, they kind of like talking, it's like Cartman and, you know, poop-colored vinyl, is it? Smells nice, is it, really? Poop-colored vinyl. Interesting, let's have a look. I will not keep this, although my kids might enjoy this. It is... <laughs> It is very turdtastic. I don't know. Maybe maybe I will keep this. Maybe I'll put this in my Christmas Christmas box. It could be fun. At, but you know what? I don't I don't want my kids to be. Then again, like let's face it. I have two boys, so like you're going to just have to go with the low brow cuz I mean, what are you going to do? You know. Have a laugh once in a while. It's fucking Christmas. Yeah, might as well. Uh Bill Evans, it must be spring promo copy. DJ, uh, this is a 
radio promo, Bill Evans. I'm not into piano jazz, man. I think it's boring as shit. I'm not gonna lie. Ram. Nice copy of Paul McCartney's Ram. Again, like, this kind of stuff, man. I could sell boxes of this stuff, man. Neil Young, Paul McCartney, Fleetwood Mac, you know, James Taylor, fucking, you know, Simon and Garfunkel, that kind of stuff, you know, people really want it. Sibelius on Angel. I don't know if anybody would want this, but um, I will either give it to, you know, my friends who like classical. I don't collect classical anymore. Sonic. Jack McDuff, Blue Note for a buck. Didn't know shit about Blue Note or Jazz. Put it on the turntable. Sound is unbelievable. Yes. Yes, it is. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I highly recommend if you see like if you see Blue Note records for a dollar and stuff, like even if you're not a jazz fan, you know, take that stuff home and listen to it, man. Like you will become a jazz fan because that stuff, the sound quality of it alone is is incredible. Uh and then, you know, musically it's awesome. You know, it's just outside maybe of your wheelhouse a little bit, you know, because like none of us Almost none of us that are watching right now uh, will uh, have grown up with jazz. It, we just did. I mean, you might have heard jazz. You might have been exposed to some jazz from a friend or family, but you didn't grow up with jazz. Jazz was not the popular music when we were kids. Jazz was not on all the radio all the time. Jazz was not being played constantly all the time. Uh, it's great music. It's wonderful music. It's it's higher order music, and it was once the popular music of, the you know, like, who was it? It was uh, not Carol King, but um, Carol, uh, the the stu famous studio musician. She was saying like, yeah, in Los Angeles in the '40s and '50s, you know, when I was growing up, she said uh, jazz was the popular music. It was on all the time. So you know, there's jazz, and then there's jazz. Yeah, there's all kinds of jazz. I mean, jazz is a huge umbrella. <laughs> I mean, they could just mean anything improvised. Uh, six Blue Notes, 90s audiophile pressings for a charity shop for two fifty each. Still steal uh, Jackie uh, McLean. It's a very vast umbrella of jazz. Jazz means a lot. This is a, this is a garage rock record. Garage rock means a lot, too. Garage rock could mean literally anything that was like guys playing in their garage, you know. The Sonic, uh, Sonics, so they're, they're a Seattle group. This is a reissue on Norton, 98 reissue on Norton. Uh, they were a very high-end, very high-order garage rock band. To call them a garage rock band is actually kind of a, a little bit um, uh, derogatory. They were so much, you know, very intense, and they were an excellent band in general. You know, they weren't just a shitty garage rock band. They were an excellent band. Uh, I mean, but jazz could mean anything. Jazz could mean anything improvised. Jazz could mean all these singers like Ella Fitzgerald and, you know... Sarah Vaughn and like you know Billy Holiday jazz can mean all these bop players like you know Charlie Parker and you know Earl, early Miles Davis. Miles Davis alone is like five different genres minimum. He created acid jazz. I mean he created whole genres. He created fusion. I mean it, it's, anyway, the Sonics. Yeah, um, saw them at the Evergreen Ballroom in Olympia with uh, Paul Revere and the Raiders. He saw the Sonics because your dad's from Seattle area. Yeah, I know. I know you have the original Sonics records, Bo, and these are super cool, man. Uh, but even to just get this reissue is cool. Is a cool thing, you know. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff in this collection, you know. There's there's whole bags of stuff I haven't even you know touched yet. I don't even know what's in it. There's a bag of records over here. I don't know what's in this. Um. So yeah, I, I don't even know, you know. What is this? There's some soundtracks. I'm not really a soundtrack guy, but my buddy here loves soundtracks. Godfather 2. Oh, man. Um, Bo, you don't owe me anything, man. If, if you if you see one, you know, I mean, I, I would love to have one. That's total grail for me. Don't pay a ton of money. Don't go out of your way. Don't, don't worry. I, I realize they don't grow on trees, you know. Um, yeah, Sonic's records, I'm sure, are not easy to find. Here's the Keith Richards I was talking about. Uh, Keith Richards solo. This is really cool. This is a promo copy of this. Talk is cheap. Um, so I don't, I actually don't see these Keith Richards solo albums. He also had a band called the Expensive Winos, and I think they're really good. Uh, I think Keith Richards is really cool. I don't see these all the time. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to have that because I didn't actually have it. Here's another record which I love. I love this. 
I'm not necessarily a Zydeco fan, but I do love Clifton Chenier, who is, uh, he is to Zydeco what, um, they're reasonable there. They used to be more common than they are now. And for week, you might see it, yeah, when you see, you might see one at the record show. I mean, it's a kind of a regional thing, the Sonics, you know. Um, the, th the problem is, like, now you have online, like, I mean, I would think that people would know to sell that online. Maybe they don't, you know. I don't know. Maybe they don't. The records are out there. I mean, if you look long enough, you will find records. It's just, <laughs> who knows what you'll find. That, to me, is what makes it <laughs> fun and interesting. It's like, God only knows. Things I th thought I would never see and would never own, I have, you know, who knows. Your wife's a big Clifton Chenier fan. I, I like it. You know, I lived in Texas, so we had a lot of Louisiana-style music, so we had a lot of Zydeco and stuff. Very danceable, very fun, you know, down-to-earth music. Uh, but Clifton Chenier is the godfather of Zydeco. He is to Zydeco what, like, James Brown is to funk or Fela Kuti is to Afrobeat or um, Bob Marley is to reggae or whatever. He's, a, you, know, you know, your wife's from Texas. Yeah, this is definitely music you would hear in Texas. I mean... In, te in Texas, you know, like accordion is like, you know, you actually hear a lot of accordion. There's an accordion festival, international accordion festival in San Antonio. It was a great show, man. All kinds of music, too. I mean, some of it's like German, some of it's French, some of it's um, Zydeco, some of it's, you know, um, Klezmer. I mean, there's all kinds of, you know, it's, you know, Span very Spanish. I mean, tons of Spanish music. So it's international. I mean, there's all kinds of. International Accordion Festival. It was a cool show, man. Really cool show. Really fun. Uh, but yeah, I love Clifton Chenier. I, I saw Clifton Chenier once. It was awesome. Clifton Chenier and Gatemouth Brown are uh, two of the shows. That, like that, that, I think that stuff is awesome. You know? the, in, in my lifetime that you could even go see that. Great danceable music. Hey, what's up, Dan? What's up, man? Top of the morning to you, Greg. So, yeah, 90 minutes into this, I probably need to stop. Uh, I need to cook my kids breakfast. But thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, this was a lot. This is a ton of stuff to go through. I mean, some of it's really cool. I have I have a lot of work to do to just sort all this stuff. Later, Bo. You guys have a good weekend, okay? It was good hanging out. Nice to hear from you, Costa. I hope everything's going well in Greece. Take care, brother. Bye-bye. After two years of watching videos, you just dared to upload your first introduction video i would i will stop by and say hi charles isn't it is it charles anyway i look forward to watching your video and uh, getting to know you better cheers cheers in london see you greg